first guy that got added to NC State, a guy that has really good size, uh, but also, you know, a guy that, you know, was a four-star player coming out of Fayetteville, went to Providence, didn't really get the, you know, the minutes of production that he was hoping for. Just your thoughts on, on what he brings to this roster for NC State uh, now that he is officially signed. I'm a huge fan of Greg Gann as, as both a player and a person. My first year kind of in basketball was his last year playing with Team Felton. So, you know, he, me and him developed a good relationship. And he's a kid that I think the biggest thing from a basketball standpoint for this team is like, he is such a switchable defender that he can play the four and can guard ones. So you don't have to worry about him switching onto a guard and being a liability that he is just a really, really consistent and, and smart defender, whether he's guarding someone that's six foot nine or, or five eleven, he's going to find a way to, to get it done. And I think the other thing with Greg is he's very good in an up-tempo open court kind of system. He can initiate offense. He played a little bit of point guard at Trinity uh, in Fayetteville and he's someone that that can do a lot of different things well. I think it's just a matter of him kind of putting it together and getting confident in his game as a whole, getting confident in that outside shot again. We've seen, I've seen games in high school where he's really gotten hot from beyond there. So I think that's the thing for him is just getting more confident in his offensive game while also bringing that same defensive intensity that was able to get him the minutes that he got at Providence. So I, I think Greg is a great addition for this team, and especially with the, the fact that Keats loves to switch everything one, one through four, He's the perfect kind of four for that style defensively. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think six foot eight, 220 is what he measured out at when he was at Providence's last year. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, you know, for, for NC State, when they were initially going after him, you know, he said, he told me straight up, you know, the, the first time I talked to him after he got the offer from NC State, the first thing he said to me when I asked him, you know, what did you think when you got the offer from NC State? He said, well, it's about time. So, you know, it was one of those things where he kind of felt like he was slighted by some of the in-state schools. Uh, he ended up going out of state, didn't really find the, you know, the fit for him in that system. And I think this is a chance for him. And we'll talk about Casey Morcell here in just a second and, and kind of the fit that he you know, was looking for. I feel like coming back home, coming to NC State, this was this was probably a better fit for him all along. I just think there was there was kind of that mentality of he had been slighted and and you know offered a little bit later in the mix uh, by NC State and wasn't really looked at by UNC or Duke, uh, even though he was one of the more talented guard or one of the more talented uh, guard slash wings slash. He, you know, he was a guard in high school. I'll say like yeah. he played guard. Yeah, because he was six. He was six seven at that time, under two hundred pounds. So he's. He's gained an inch, gained 30 pounds. Uh, he's a guy that I think has a chance to, you know, to really kind of add some versatility to this team. And he, he strikes me a lot as, you know, a, I don't want to say a more refined uh, Darian Sebron, because I think we saw Darian Sebron grow into his own at the end of last year and really, you know, become a starter for this team. But I think adding the two of them together uh, really, I think will, will really develop this front court for NC State and, you know, a little bit of the backcourt 